In this video, I will be talking about the Three Kingdoms period of China, focusing on the many talented heroes of that time. King Wu Tegu Historically speaking, there is no evidence to support the named Nanman chieftains like Wu Tegu ever existed. Even Meng Huo, the king that united the tribe's existence, is debated. One reason to doubt his existence is how he was famously captured seven times, and coincidentally his last name Huo translates to captured. A counter-argument against this reminds that the same coincidence also applies to other people of the time, one being that Shan translates to abdicate, just like Liu Bei's son Liu Shan, who abdicated the Shu throne. The Nanman people were indeed an ancient collective of indigenous tribes that under the Han dynasty were adopted into the realm and categorised into three groups. The people of Pangu were known to worship dog totems and lived in Wuling and Chan Sha commanderies. The Linjun, who resided in Ba and Nan, worshipped the tiger. And then there was the Bandun Man, who lived even further west, who were known for their prowess in battle and their musical arts. In the year 223, after the king of Shu Liu Bei passed away, the Nanman people revolted, stating how three kingdoms all claiming legitimacy had left them unsure who to pay homage to. The Shu Prime Minister Zhu Ge Liang suppressed the rebellions two years later, where it is claimed that he captured the Nanman leader Meng Huo seven times. In the romanticised version of events, King Wu Tegu was the ruler of Wu Ji, Towering over people at 9 foot tall, he was often portrayed as one of the tallest characters within the games, where it is said he often ate venomous snakes and frogs. His personalised unit of choice was a specialised rattan armour unit that gained a reputation for being invincible. They smeared their armour in oils, which caused blades and arrows to slide off it more easily, and enabled its user to also float on water. A defeated Menghuo arrived to meet Wu Tegu desperately seeking allies to help deal with Zhu Ge Liang and the Middle Kingdom army. He mustered his 30,000 Rattan troops, his two generals Tu An and Xi Ni, then marched north where he easily defeated the Shu general Wei Yan who was stationed near a river. The water in the region made the Shu soldiers sick, whilst at the same time revitalised the local tribesmen. On top of this, Wei Yan's ranged units could not seem to penetrate the Rattan armour, so were forced to retreat. Wu Tegu, having heard of Zhu Ge Liang's trickery, was too paranoid to pursue the unit as he feared it could be a trap. The next morning, the scouts reported on the location of Wei Yan's new camp. With this information, Wu Tegu spearheaded his army and led his men to 15 consecutive victories within 15 days against Wei Yan, capturing his camp seven times. After the seventh victory, Wu Tegu spotted enemy flags in a forest and so ordered his unit away from the area to prevent an ambush. By the end, the Shu morale was so low that they would flee upon hearing the army approaching, even discarding their equipment in the process. Wu Tegu, upon his white elephant, hurled insults at Wei Yan as he charged his unit one more time, resulting in another easy victory. Upon hearing the combined battle cries of Wu Tegu and his elephant, Wei Yan called for a retreat up a nearby valley. Wu Tegu was confident there could be no ambush as the hills were bare of trees and grass, so ordered the pursuit. A short way up he encountered abandoned carts but remembered the Shu forces leaving their equipment behind and so thought nothing of it. Another short while passed until he was met by a few Shu soldiers pushing boulders and logs down the hills towards them. The attack was ineffective and the path was easily cleared, so an unimpressed yet confident Wu Tegu pressed on. He had acted entirely as Zhu Ge Liang had predicted and walked straight into a Shu trap. Ahead of Wu Tegu's army was a row of black wagons filled with a burning contraption. Behind him, the way had been blocked with the carts that they had encountered earlier. He kept a cool head and ordered his men to find an alternate route out of the valley. But before they could begin, Shu archers ignited the entire area in flames. The floor had seemingly been doused with a flammable substance, causing an explosion that decimated the entire unit. In the Romance of the Three Kingdoms novel, Shu Ge Liang is quoted saying, I guessed the enemy would be looking for an ambush in the woods, so I set up decoy banners there to confuse them there were never any troops. Next, I had Wei Yan lose a series of battles to strengthen their confidence. I then ordered Ma Dai to deploy the black wagons in the valley. They had been loaded earlier with fire launchers called Earth Thunder, each containing nine missiles. We cut off the road and burned out the enemy. 
Meng Huo arrived shortly after, where he witnessed the destruction that Zhu Giliong had caused. He was soon engaged by two units of Shu soldiers, but the fight did not last long, as most of his men were actually Shu spies in disguise, who then turned on the genuine troops within his unit. He fled the battle, but was quickly captured by the Shu general Ma Dai, who then brought him to Zhu Giliong. With this being the seventh time that he was captured, he was so moved by the generosity shown by his enemy that he pledged himself and his family line to the Shu kingdom, whereupon his kingship was recognised and his lands conquered during the fighting were reinstated to him. If you enjoyed my video, don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button, and I'll see you next time.